Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, I am Raluca Barbu, uh, the Adult Programming Specialist for the Algonquin Area Library. Uh, I am joined tonight by my friend Jen Paleraccio, Community Education Culinary Instructor and the owner and founder of Lean Bella's Kitchen. As an attendee, your microphone and camera are turned off. Closed captioning has been enabled and you can turn it on by clicking on the show caption icon at the bottom of your screen. Uh, during today's event, you can submit your questions by clicking the Q&A icon and Jen will gladly answer them throughout the presentation. We will now begin our uh, dumpling making class. Uh, we will learn how to make delicious dumplings from scratch with step-by-step -step instructions uh, and expert guidance from uh, culinary instructor, Jen. Hi, Jen. Thank you for joining us tonight. Okay, I just need my... All right, okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Raluca, for that nice introduction. And um, I thank you for joining me tonight. And this is the dumpling class. So it's pretty simple to make dumpling, but I'm gonna show you how to make the wrappers from scratch. So the dumplings that we're gonna make tonight, it is called gyoza, it's a Japanese dumplings, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to fold the, uh, the gyoza, and then how to, first I'll show you how to make the wrapper from scratch. And then we have to rest the dough. While the dough is resting, then we're gonna make our pork filling. It's a spicy pork, Filling. It has, it's not really spicy. It has the gojujang. Gojujang is a Korean chili paste. I know we're, <laughs> it's, it's a Japanese gyoza, but we were using Korean chili paste because it is good. It is a good chili paste to add into your pork. It gives a lot of that umami flavor. So we're going to add that. Um, but first, let me have, I have, this is all purpose flour. All right. So you, you, can use either unbleached or bleach uh, all-purpose flour, okay? So, by the way, I don't need to transfer it to another bowl, right? <laughs> so, okay. So, what well, I'm, I'm going to have, this is a, um, just a room temperature water. And this is two-thirds water. Um, I believe you have received the recipe. So, everything, I wrote all the instructions and the measurement there. So I'm gonna add the water like a little bit at a time. And then I'm gonna have the spatula just to, just to kind of mix the dough, okay, all together. And then I'm gonna add some more, okay? And then try and mix it. Okay, sometimes you need to add more and you just go ahead and add more because you want the dough to come together and to form into, like you, you pour, form it into a ball. And then we're gonna add more here. Okay. So here, okay, so it's not quite there yet. If you can see, you know, it's still very loose. So we still need to add more water. You know what, I'm gonna add all of it. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and use my spatula just to kind of have the, the flour come together, okay? And then once it comes together, I just use my hands and then just, just like when you're making the bread, you knead the dough and we're gonna knead the dough in a little bit and then Well, actually, we're just we're just forming the dough. Okay, so now it is coming together. All right. For me, two thirds cup of the uh, water works well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And then now it's I'm just trying to get it into a smooth dough. It's not there yet. Okay. So now you have to knead the dough for about 
I know it says 10 minutes. Yeah. Until it's smooth and you might need one. Uh, okay. Now I have to just... Okay. It comes together like this, but you have to knead it into a smooth dough. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to knead this. Okay. I'm going to put this away. So I have more more space here that you can see me. So if you have any question, I'm not sure if Raluca can answer, can can um, go into the chat box and then just let me know what the question is because sometimes it's hard to like my dirty hands, you know, to. Yes, I will monitor the questions, Jen, and I will ask you uh, each question at a time, okay? When they come. Oh. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Raluca. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So, all right. So here, the dough, I have to knead it until it is very smooth. Okay. So the reason I didn't, so this is why I can't make it ahead of time because I have to show you how, and then I'm just dusting the surface so that um, it does not stick. So you kind of keep dusting the surface, but just Lightly dust the surface, don't use too much flour because that sometimes affects the consistency of the dumpling wrappers. You want a nice thin wrapper, okay? Not too thin, well, not too thin that it will rip, but not too thick that all you can taste is the wrapper, all right? Because we also want to highlight the pork filling. So that's why we're just going to have, you know, the, the, the wrapper balance with the filling. Okay. So now it's still not that smooth yet. We're not <laughs> there yet. It takes a little bit. It's, it takes a little bit of elbow greasing. So, but however, I have homemade, I mean, store-bought. This is a store-bought dumplings. Asian store has... I bought this from one of like H Mart, I think. Asian store, if you know, if you can go and grab some from the Asian store. I think sometimes regular grocery too, sometimes they have that in their freezer. It's in the freezer, they freeze those. Now, if you don't want to go through the trouble of making the slot, the wrapper from scratch, then you can always, always buy the um, store-bought one, the already made, and which is, of course, a lot easier. <laughs> but if you want some like arm exercise, <laughs> then this is, this is, you know, the best way <laughs> and really exercise your arm. You, you'll you have big muscles <laughs> after you're, you're done with kneading this. Um, it's not quite like bread because this is just water and Flour. So, you know, it's a very inexpensive ingredients for the wrappers, just, you know, all purpose flour and warm, like a little warm water, okay, I use. Because then, you know, the gluten forms when it's a little warmer. And we want that because we want that really nice and smooth wrapper. So, so the way you knead it is just you kind of push it and then pull, and then you use the heel of your um, hand, like push it with the heel of your hand like that, like so, okay? So. And then we're almost there. Okay. And from time to time, I will go in and lower my camera so all you're gonna see is my hands working and I'll be talking next to the camera so you can also hear me, but I will show you, like right now, I'm gonna tilt my camera right now so you can exactly, you can have a better view of what I'm doing right here, right here, okay? I think this is good enough. Should be like, I don't know, It's it, has it been 10 minutes? just 10 minutes. I know that's a long time, but um, 
yeah. You can watch something on <laughs> social your social media. Now here, see it's it's getting like smooth, okay? So I'm gonna do a little bit more. Okay. So I think we're good to go. I think this is okay now. So the way you can, the way you see is when you press, it bounces back. See? Because press and it bounces back. It's just like the bread. Okay, when you make the bread, you want it smooth and you want to try and press it and it bounces back. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to wrap this in a plastic wrap and then rest it for about 20, 30 minutes or until you're done with your pork filling, okay? So there you go. I'm just going to wrap this and then put it in the side. So you're wrapping it so it doesn't dry and then you're just resting it because once this rests, it forms more gluten and it's easier for us to manipulate it, like to roll it and cut it into circle. We're gonna cut it into circle after we roll it and then, but we're gonna, well, the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna divide this into about like half and then make this really long log and then cut it into small pieces. And that piece, we're gonna roll it into a circle like this. Okay, I'm going to show you all of that later. I'm just trying to uh, explain it right now. Okay, I'm going to wash my hands. I'll be right back. Okay, so now... Okay, so here's what we're gonna we're gonna prep our filling. So it's brown pork. Now, if you you can also make with make the filling with shrimp if you want shrimp. If you want the combination of shrimp and pork, you could do that too. You get more flavor doing that. So. I have garlic and ginger here. That this is for the dipping sauce later, and then I have more garlic here and ginger. And this, this is what we're gonna um, add to the pork. And then this is the gochujang. Let me show you what it looks like. Let me show you what it looks like. So here you can see it says go jujang and then it says Korean pepper paste. So it looks like that. This is the container and that's the paste and this is what we're going to be using for tonight. It it has a little kick but not too spicy and it's a little bit sweet also. Sweet and savory. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is, so mincing the garlic, I know you're probably, I'm not sure if everyone are familiar with like mincing the garlic. Now, when the recipe calls for a thumb size or an inch size ginger, you probably sometimes you know like a thumb size. I mean, what is a thumb size? Other people has bigger size than me. So what does it mean? That's why I always say, I always put down on my recipe, one tablespoon mince ginger. When you mince your aromatics, what are aromatics? Ginger, garlic, onions, those are aromatics. Now, especially garlic and ginger, when you mince them, then it has, it, you get like bigger pieces, mince. When you grate them, when you have a grater, like a microplane and you grate them, then it's less because it is more fine pieces. And that you'll only get about like a teaspoon. All right. And that that also could, you know, if you want more, you can add more, but 
when it's a tablespoon of ginger, then that's mint. Okay. So what I do, what I like is to slice, to slice it first in little slices, and then I will cut this into thin strips, like julienne, like thin strips like that. Okay. And then after I cut it into thin strips, I'm going to uh, dice it into smaller dice. And that is the mince right there. Okay. So it's like a fine, really fine dicing of your aromatic. So, Jen, I have a question here. Uh, can you also uh -huh. grate the ginger instead of uh, like mincing it? Can you? Yes, you grater? could. Yeah, you could grate it, but with grating it, then the size of your ginger is like a thumb size or an inch size. So, but definitely you can grate it. Okay. So I'm just mincing it because it's a you know easier for people. I know the recipe says two garlic cloves. I I like garlic, so I'm gonna put three cloves. But you can start with two, okay, and see how you like it. But I know that I like more garlic, so I'm gonna start with three. It's the same way you mince the garlic, the same way you mince your ginger. You cut it, you slice it first, and then you cut it into thin strips and then start dicing it, you know? It's like dicing it in a really small dice, like fine, fine cheese, okay. But if you also want to grate your garlic, you can grate it too. Or if you want one of those, if you have one of those garlic press, you can also use the garlic press, okay? Just showing you this, I know, I was saying, well, it's a lot easier and then you won't get these small chunks of garlic and ginger in the mix, but just trying to show, because I exactly don't know if some people need like, okay, how do you mince the garlic and how do you mince the ginger? So I'm just trying to show it to them, but definitely you can always grate the ginger. You can always, um, garlic and ginger. So, all right, let me just rinse my, garlic is so sticky. So let me just rinse my knife. And then also the same thing with how much, it's up to you how much um, green onions you like. So I cut it in half. I always cut it in half first and then I just slice them. I just slice them. You can slice them in an angle or you can slice them like just straight up, slice them. I have more than two stalks of green onions here, or you call it scallions, okay? Because I like ginger. And some of this, I'm not gonna put it all in the pork mixture because I'm gonna save some of it and for my, and my dipping sauce. I like a little bit of ginger and uh, not ginger, <laughs> a little bit of green onion, sorry. A little bit of green onions added here, this much. I'm gonna add it to my sauce later. So that would stay there. So while I still have my chopping board, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mince the garlic and ginger for my dipping sauce. I can always, I mean, for the dipping sauce, it's probably more recommended to grate them, all right? So you really have like fine, fine, fine. But since I already have my cutting board here and my knife right here, then I'll just mince them. Okay, so. Okay, so just mincing it again into really fine pieces, especially when you're, you know, dipping sauce, I would always, how we grate them is more ideal than mincing them. So you don't bite into this pieces of your aromatics. For me, I don't mind. I like that. I can eat garlic twice. <laughs> Sometimes, not all the time. Not when I'm going out with, with friends or other people because garlic can be like a really, really pungent, you know, smell. Okay. 
All right. Okay, so there it goes. This is going to the dipping sauce later. Okay, let me just clean it up. So I have, this is going for the, this is the dipping sauce that we're gonna add later. So I'll just set it aside and then that's it. That's all the chopping we're gonna do. So, okay, let me get my cutting board out here. Let me just clean up a little bit. It's a lot nicer to work work in a cleaner environment. Tidy a little bit. Okay, so let me just wipe my hands. All right. Okay. It's really simple. So what I have here, I'm just gonna mix all the ingredients together. Okay, can't find them. All right, okay. So pork goes in here, all right, you don't have to have this a lot of uh, bowls out. I'm just, I have it because I have to show you what the steps are. But if you're just doing this on your own at home, try to eliminate, <laughs> try to lessen the dishes, all right? So what do we have? Okay, soy sauce, right? Soy sauce. Measurement is like, I think, and then sesame oil, sesame oil really gives that nice nutty flavor. And then a little bit of red chili pepper flakes and the goju jar. Okay. And then, and then the egg, you just crack that egg now. Just one egg just to bind everything together. And then we're gonna have our aromatic. We're gonna have the ginger, the garlic, and the onion. Now, you might wanna ask, well, can we add more color or veggies? Sure, yes. You can add shredded cabbage, carrots, um, radish, whatever you want. But I'm just making it as simple as possible tonight. So, right, so um, this is just the basic. And right now and you can have if you don't want the chili paste you don't have to really but you know you want that flavor of garlic ginger and soy sauce um if you don't want soy sauce you can just have like salt and pepper um but the garlic ginger and the green onions i will not leave it because that's the the taste that you want you know your dumplings to really have okay so you can just mix this, make sure they're all, you know, toss it until it's evenly coated. Okay, because you don't want some of them have all this uh, seasoning and then some don't, some part of your pork don't have seasoning. So you just want to make sure you get in there and then you just stir, stir it as well. Okay. If you want it more um, spicier and has that heat, then you add more red chili pepper flakes. You can always adjust, you know, however you want it. But this is just the, the base of when I make my pork dumpling. Okay, so I think that's good enough. So you see, it's all well coated and just make sure. All right, so. We're gonna leave it, but I'm gonna need a smaller spoon when we are ready to fill. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this spoon, like the smaller spoon when I'm ready. So we're just gonna set this aside, or you can, I'm gonna put it in the fridge right now while I'm working on the dough, okay?
Okay, now let's check on our girls. Okay. Well, you know what, before we work on our dough, how about let it sit more, some more, um, let's give it more time and let's make the, let's make the sauce, okay? All right, the sauce is like the sweet and sour sauce. Now, if you really want, if you really want spicy, I found this in the Vietnamese store and it's a crunchy garlic with chili oil. It's hot. So it's like, a, it's a chili oil. So if you want it more, you can add more chili oil right there. But I think I'm just gonna put a little bit later on. So for the sauce, it's just, um, okay. I have to go back to my recipe. Although even though I, wrote the recipe, I still need to go back sometimes and kind of not remember everything. Okay, so we're gonna do about a quarter, quarter cup of um, soy sauce. If you're just doing this for like, cut the recipe in half. If you're just like, I'm only doing this for one person. It's just myself, you know, I mean, cut the recipe in half. Okay, so rice, rice vinegar is two tablespoons rice vinegar. Just give that acidity. All right, and then to that, we're going to add, we're going to add some honey. It's about a tablespoon of honey. So right there, tablespoon of honey. I'm gonna use my finger to get all the honey out, out of this uh, measuring spoon. And aside from the honey, I'm gonna add the brown sugar. And then a little bit of sesame oil. Okay, and then here comes the, the garlic and ginger. And a little bit of this, the green onions, okay. It's not on, on the recipe, but you can add it. You know what, I think instead of adding the red chili pepper flakes, I'm gonna add a little bit of chili oil. This is just a really, <laughs> A really nice okay. I'm just going to... Okay. You just have to... <laughs> My dog is going crazy on there. Okay. Uh, right. Jen, Jen, we have a question here. Uh, it says, if I use the store-bought wrappers, do I need to defrost them before use? Yes. Yes. Because you won't be able to fold it while it's frozen. It'll crack. It'll tear. So you need to buy it. Just put it in the fridge the night before. And the next day, like what I did, I put it, it was in the freezer last night. I put it in the fridge. And then now I can, you know, it's, it's thawed out, it's soft, and I can use it. So, okay. And I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna show you also, I'll open this, I'll show you, because just in case you wanna buy a store-bought, then I'll show you what it looks like. And then for the sauce, now you're gonna taste this sauce, okay? You might, if it if it turns out too salty for you, then you add a little bit of water, okay? And now if it's like, oh, I need more soy sauce, then you add more soy sauce. I need more, you know, I want it more spicy, add more red chili pepper flakes or chili oil. Oh, it's not, doesn't have that sesame kick yet. Okay, add more sesame oil. 
add more vinegar, add more honey, add more sugar if it's not. Now I'm gonna taste this and see. Okay, so let's see. Mm, perfect. Uh, then we have another question here. The uh, can I use ground beef for the filling? Okay, here's normally I don't use ground beef because it has ground beef has that more gamey taste that I always use pork. You can mix pork and a little bit of ground beef. Or you can mix pork with a little bit of shrimp. If you really must use ground beef, then you can go ahead. But um, yeah, it has for me. It just does not work with dumplings. But surely, I mean, it will cook well too. It's 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 beef, so it doesn't beef doesn't even have to be cooked all the way, and it's ground, so it will certainly cook. Oh. Okay, here's the mistake. It is good to make mistakes so I can show you also what you not, don't do, what you can, you know, don't do it. <laughs> Look it. You have to, because it's so sticky, you have to oil. You have to kind of, for somehow, like use Ziploc bag and put a little bit of oil or put it in the bowl and just cover the cover the boil bowl like the mixing bowl with with and and put a little bit of oil like a neutral oil um like vegetable oil or canola oil look at what happened look at when you you know it just it sticks so it needs that's what i forgot you need to oil it but that's okay <laughs> so, okay i mean it just stays really really sick So that's one mistake. So now you know what not to do, okay? So again, lightly test it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, see as it rests, it gets more um, smoother. I'm gonna work on half of it. And then I'm gonna just leave half of it, but I'm gonna cover this. Bit. Okay, now you're gonna have to have like make sure that you flour this so then the plastic bag does not stick to it. But you cover it so it doesn't dry out, okay, while you're working on the other half. All right, so here, here it is. No. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna Uh, Jen, somebody is asking when you rest the dough, do you refrigerate it or just rest it on the counter? If you're going to do this the same day, you just leave it on the counter. But if you decide to work the dough today and then work it tomorrow, then put it in the fridge. But if you're making it the same day, then you don't. So what you want to do is you kind of like form like a donut like that. Okay, make sure that it's evenly, you know, it's like a ring. Forming a ring. Okay. All right. Okay, so try to even the, the size. And then we're gonna cut it. And then we're gonna have this log, okay? And then we're gonna cut it into even pieces. So where is the middle? Right there. Where, where is the middle of this? Right there. Okay, you wanna try and then right there, right there. So about this kind of piece, like it's probably a little bigger, but okay. So then you cover this also, and then here, okay. Right, what you gonna, you what you want to do is get your. This will work. 
too, but I like this because it's smaller and I'm working on a smaller piece of dough. So I like a smaller, um, like a rod, smaller um, rolling pin, but certainly you could just use the bigger one, right? So what you need to do is really I like, see what I do here is because some people don't even use a rolling, uh, I mean, a, a cookie cutter and then just, you know, do this and then kind of, this is it. This is the, this is it. This is the, the dough like that. But what I like is, so then I can, so that it's uniform. I like to cut, I, I like to use the cookie cutter and then just really, really, and then whatever is left on the side, like the, if you have an excess dough, because you will have an excess dough if you use a cookie cutter, then you can roll it again. So you roll it thin, okay, then you cut it. And you probably might ask, why don't you just roll the whole thing and then cut it? Because I don't get a, a nice thin wrapper when I do that. So now you have this one and you can re-roll this one. Now this one, what you're gonna have to do is make sure that you flour really well, okay? Because this is going in this side. So this is how thin it is. Like that thin, okay? All right. Now you're going, you're going to move it to the side. All right, and then you're going to keep rolling. You're going to keep rolling and rolling. Uh, Jen, can we use ground chicken f instead of pork? Yes, you can use ground chicken. I I rather have ground chicken than beef. But um, yeah, you can use beef too. But I just, I find that beef has more of that, like more of the gamey <laughs> flavor. Okay, so we're gonna cut it again. Just make sure before you put it on top of your other one that it is fully flour. Okay, make sure you flour this because they are going to stick. They stick like crazy. So you're gonna have to make sure that there's flour okay all right so now i'm not gonna roll everything okay because i just want you to show how to roll it so in that case i'm gonna roll this later and then use them but then we're gonna use this okay but i want to show you here i'm gonna make another one so we have at least three dumplings that's made from Okay, again, I'm gonna have to dust it. Okay, dust it like that and like this, you roll it again and you could probably roll another one. Okay. Let's roll this other one. And you, some, some roll it like this, like the outside, needs to be thinner than the inner portion of the wrapper. So they they roll the outside a little bit thinner than the inner part. I find it not making a difference if I roll only the, the same thickness, but that's how authentic, I mean, authentically the Japanese does it because this is a Japanese girl, so. So what they do is they will roll more on the outside like that because they want it, the outside to be thinner than the inner part of the dough. So, but, okay. So again, I'm gonna make sure, okay. So this is what we made. And I'm gonna cover this. So here we're gonna reserve this. I mean, this is for later. 
maybe. Okay, so this is not gonna stick because it has flock. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna Okay, I'm gonna take this like on the side over here. Yeah. Let me just I'm going to so so that, yeah, everything everybody like okay with making the wrapper, I would say thumbs up. Can you do the thumbs up on the <laughs> On the webinar. Uh, we have a few more questions, Jen. For the store bought dough, do you have to flour the dough? When when what? I'm sorry. Uh, Say that again. For the store bought dough, do you have to flour the dough? No, no, you you don't. Does it's already floured? I'm going to show you. Okay. So you open this and then now when you're when you don't finish everything, then you put it in a Ziploc bag. It has this very cardboard. See, it has flour already. They they flour it. Now, now what you need though is a little bit of water to dab the edges. With the store bought, with the with the homemade, you don't have to do water. You don't have to. You need a water to kind of to seal. You're gonna have to depth around, you know, the the edges, so then you can seal this. All right, so we're ready for our to wrap this. Okay. Now. Don't hesitate, just keep that questions coming and then, <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna do the ones that we made first, okay. All right, here's the one we made, right? Okay, we you don't have to, to wet the edges because they will stick because it's very fresh and still sticky. Now, this one kind of been sitting out, you know, sitting not, sitting around so it's kind of dry up a little bit all right so what you want is about maybe a teaspoon or it depends on how don't don't fill it too much because then when you okay first is the gyoza is like you fold this okay i'm gonna have to Oops, I can't, I can't do this. All right, here. So what you're gonna, what you wanna do is you don't touch this back here, you just leave it there. And then you're gonna pleat this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna push it and form it into a pleated. Okay, so like that. So, and then you go the other side and then you pleat the other side too. Okay, so you have a pleated and then you make sure that you press it. So you have a pleated side, all right? That's the back and that's the front. It's very soft. This is really a soft, like the fresh, you can tell that it's really a fresh. So that's, now that's, it's easier, this is easier to really fold. really beautiful, Jen. <laughs> oh. Uh, so, Somebody is asking if we can use wonton wrappers. Oh, wonton wrappers is, hmm, 
I've never tried wonton wrap wrappers because there's wonton is different. They they are made differently. I wouldn't use wonton wrappers. Just use specifically the one for dumpling. Okay. Wonton is for, I mean, you can fry it. I mean, you fry it, you'll probably get away. I've never tried wonton wrappers. So I I I kind of hesitant to really answer that question. <laughs> but you can try. Okay. So with the store bought, I like to kind of damp this edges. All right. And then just wipe your just wipe your hands with paper towel. And then here you're gonna do it. This is easier to fold. I find that the store bought is a lot easier to fold. Okay, now you're gonna go the other side. Then you're gonna fold the other side. Okay, see, yeah, I put a little bit more. Okay, now I have to press it down on the on a flat surface here. And then kind of like press this in a second and see. Okay. Oh. I want to get closer to you, but I can't. Maybe if I maybe if I use this. Are you guys seeing this like good? Yes. Okay. This one again. That's the back. And that's the Okay, so I'm going to make, maybe this, make all of our homemade ones. Oh, this one is so thin that it's ripping. So that's, I'm not going to use that. Okay. <laughs> this one just stuck together. Okay. All right. This is why you use a lot of flour. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so this. Okay, well, that's stuck together. So this is fine. That's kind of like what you have to really flour. Yeah, and then you might have to. Okay. <laughs> I want to make enough to for, for us to fry. The wonton wrappers, I mean the dumpling wrappers that you buy are a little smaller than what you make. They come small. So I like what I wanted. I like I mean I'm holding it like this because I want to show you, but but when I make this here at home, I lay it flat down like that. And then I close this and then one side. Let's see, can you, can you see it? I'm behind the camera so I can't see it. I, I can't see, I'm just doing this to show you. This is one side. I'm going on one side first. So see how that one side now right there, okay. And now I'm going to go the other side. And then you just press this and you press it. I feel it too much. Don't feel it too much. Then you, it won't stick. Okay. And there you go. Okay, there is another way of folding. 
which is also similar to gyoza, but it's not, it's just going all the way around. And Okay, so this one is just, what you're doing is you're just, you're not going one side and the other side, you just go all the way to one side. And then the, that's just, yeah. oh my God, it's so flower. It's just a purse. They call this the purse. They look like a purse when you're done. You're also making the pleats, but you're only making it like one side. It almost comes like the same. Why is so much flour on this? Mm. And then there's also one that just, you're just folding the, and then there's this, but they fold just this two side. They do this and then they do that and then they do that. And then they, they just do this. They just kind of, it looks like butterfly. So just this two sides, they just push it in and then pinch this side. And they look like, like this. Okay, we'll probably do, let's do like a couple more and then we'll fry it. This is my favorite folding is the gyoza fold, like the normal Japanese dumpling fold. I know this this Asian dumpling are so different from um the regular the American dumplings, right? It's just this is I, I guess this is so much technical, like a, a lot of steps involved in this one. With with uh like if you're making like chicken dumplings that the dumplings that you know, the Americans make is just flour and then you put the dough together and you just uh, cook it in a broth with the chicken. And that's it. But the Asian one, they got really fancier and just made it into different folds. One side, see that one side, and then go to the other side and do the same one, please. Oh, I, I wish I can show this to you in person. <laughs> you guys can. Okay, so I think we have one, two, three, three, four, and then this one, five. Let's make another one so we have even. 
the even number. Oh, I got a lot of dumplings to, to wrap tonight. Okay. Yeah, my daughter's getting excited and she's just like, oh, I want some dumplings. I haven't had dumplings, she said, for a while. Ground chicken would be good. Even ground turkey would be good. Ground chicken and shrimp. I mean, if you add shrimp, you get, you know, it's another layer of flavor that you're adding to your filling. Okay. All right. So, okay, we're going to fry it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this and I'm gonna get a ziploc bag. So this is how you. But try once you open the dumpling, try to use them the same the same day. You can refreeze them, but it, you know the. The freshness get it gets it gets harder and it cracks like it turns um easily when it's okay. I'm gonna re-roll this a little bit, put it aside. Okay. Put this aside. Okay. All right, I'm going to put this on the side. I'm just going to wash my hands real quick. Okay, so we made this. So now we're ready. Okay. All right, so try to use a nonstick skillet, okay? So this is the nonstick skillet. All right, what you wanna do is fry them first. You, you can use, some people use sesame oil to fry. I don't want to use sesame oil because for me, sesame oil is a condiment because it, it burns fast and it the, and it has that, that really nutty taste. So I just use a neutral oil, which is like vegetable oil. And then what you do is you're going to heat the pan. That's the key. Heat the pan. Medium high heat. Okay. And then let it heat up. Just oil a little bit. Well, maybe two tablespoons. One, two. Okay. It depends on how, how nonstick is your nonstick pan. <laughs> so it's either it's an old nonstick pan that doesn't have any more of that, you know, non-stick layer coating, so you're gonna need more oil or it's a brand new one that just don't need oil at all or maybe just like a drop of oil. I just wanna make sure I kind of tilt, I always tilt the pan to make sure that my, it's coated with oil, like all sides of it is coated with oil. So it's not that one side getting an oil, oil and the other is not. Okay, so, all right. Okay, so I let it heat up. Okay. And then I'm gonna need a little bit of water. Okay. 
Okay, so let me put this I thought that I whispered the sauce back where it should be. Right, so the dump, I have more wrapping to do later. So I'm going to leave it there. Okay. So here, the oil. I mean, for me, of course, we always, we can use a thermometer to see how hot is the pan, right? But like around 300 degrees. But I, what I do is I stick the wooden spoon and if I see bubbles, it's bubbling, like on the tip of the wooden spoon, then I know that the oil is hot. I think this is kind of really hot. So somebody, it gets really hot. Uh, Jen, somebody. Uh huh? Yeah? Somebody is asking if they could use butter instead of oil. Oh, I wouldn't use butter. It, it will, the butter will, uh, will burn. Okay, then I'm going to just place this here, okay? Place this here. I want this one butterfly looking one. Put that there. Put it there. Okay. Place this one here. Okay. All right. So the goal here is let the bottom of the um, dumplings brown, okay? Let me show you how it looks like when it browns. You give it a few minutes until it's nicely brown, the bottom, okay? And then you have to have your fitted lid ready because we're going to add water to it. So it steams and it cooks the dumpling all the way through. It cooks that pork all the way through. So we're going to cover it, let it steam for a few minutes. And then once all the water, the liquid has been absorbed, then this is what you're looking for. You're looking for a nice golden brown, all right? So it is nice and golden brown. Get your lid ready because you know water and oil does not mix, right? So you're going to put a little bit of water. And then we're going to cover it. Okay, you're going to cover it. I put about maybe a quarter cup of water. Right? And then what you want to do is just Cover it and let it cook. So we're looking at maybe five minutes. So I need to add more water. I think I need to add more water, a little bit more. I think that was not quarter cup. So, okay. Uh, All right. Jen, so how long will the, sorry, <laughs> how long will the dipping sauce keep in the refrigerator? About five to six days, I would say. Yeah, put it in the fridge. Even seven days, I think it would still be good. As long as it's in the fridge, like airtight container in the fridge. It will last long. It has vinegar, so there's some kind of acid and, and sugar. So that kind of preserves, you know, the rest of the ingredients. Then. 
Okay, this should be good now. And you can you can drizzle a little bit of sesame oil so it has that really nice. Okay. You know, this is the dumpling is kind of nice and okay. All right, that's it. You just it looks really nice and okay. So now okay. So you have your plate and you're ready to serve. Yeah, nice. You kind of like that brown. Okay, so we're gonna that. Yeah. This is the homemade wrapper. This is the store bought wrapper. They're kind of more. They're more thin. Does that look like the appetizer you get when you go to the restaurant, right? And this one is the the butterfly one that we yeah okay that I showed you. All right, so there you go. Okay, and then. And then you have, okay, go ahead and make this this weekend and have dumpling party. Invite your neighbors, your friends, your family over and make this dumpling. Look at how pretty that is. And sometimes you can even you will garnish with some, the, the green part of the onions. Okay, you can do that too. And then... Now you're probably gonna say, well, what how what do I serve the dumplings with? What do you serve the dumplings with? You can have you can make the you can make soup. All right, so the soup. Okay, you can make you can make dumpling soup. You can make you you can buy uh like chicken broth and then just add some carrots and uh, ginger and and onions and some cabbage and then make it into the dumpling soup. That's what I that's what I do most of the time. And then I just I just make the broth like the chicken broth, but I added a little bit like carrots and and sometimes a little bit of celery, carrots and uh, like the holy trinity, the carrots, celery and the onions, so to give it a really nice flavor. And then sometimes I do like pieces of, you know, like shredded chicken. And then I will <laughs> have the, you know, just boil the dumpling. So it will boil, you don't have to cook, you don't have to fry the dumplings when you're making dumpling, Asian dumpling soup. You just, you can freeze this. So what you do is after you make it, and then it's, you know, put it on the, put it on the, you know how I line it on this um, sheet pan? and then put it in the freezer and let it freeze for about half an hour to an hour. And then you place it in a like Ziploc bag. Let's say you make 30, 40 of them. Then you place it in a Ziploc bag, but you have to freeze it first on the sheet so then it does not, it will not stick together because it will stick together. Just like your fruits, when you cut up some fruits and you want to freeze it, you gotta freeze it on the sheet first before you transfer it or bag it and put it in a, a freezer bag and then freeze it for however long you want. But you want you want to freeze it first and then put it in the bag and then freeze and then what then you can just you can just take it out. You don't even have to wait and thaw before you fry it. You can just heat the oil and then just 
just cook that frozen dumplings there, just like what I did. I, I put the oil and then put the dumplings and then let it brown. The bottom will brown. And once the bottom is brown, then you add the water and you cover it. You don't have to wait and you don't have to thaw the dumplings once it's frozen. Because um, just like when you buy dumplings from the store, I don't know if you bought some. I did one time. You don't have to thaw, just cook it right away. Even if you're making dumpling soup also, you could just dump it in the soup. No need to thaw it. All right, so let's try. Yeah. You guys ready? See? All right. So where is that one that okay? This is the one you made, like the the wrapper is from scratch. Okay. And dip it. Well, you don't have to have your own dipping sauce because you tell them, <laughs> tell the people no double dipping. <laughs> okay, so or you can have a little a small spoon. So then people can spoon it, you know, however you want. It's it's your call. Mmm. Okay. Mmm. <laughs> perfect. I bet they are perfect. <laughs> See, it's cooked, fully cooked. Okay. And then, like I said, you can just some more sauce. Mmm. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to make you hungry, but I just had to show you how I eat it and how it looks inside. That dough, I like that. The fresh dough that we made, it has that, you can tell it's fresh dough. It's chewy and there's crunch at the bottom and it's really fresh. You see that store bought. Store-bought is, uh -huh. here's the difference. The store-bought is really thin. So the thinner, so it has more crunch, but it doesn't have that chew. And I'm always looking for that chew. I don't know, Asian always like that, like the mochi kind of texture. <laughs> so like that chewy, or when you buy, both, when you buy like, um, a boba drink, you want that tapioca, it's always that chewiness. I'm always looking for that. So that's probably what I'm looking for. That's why I said I like the the wrapper that we made from scratch because of that fact that I like the chewiness. But the store bought is good too. It's crispier, it's made thinner, and most restaurants serve, I don't think the restaurant really make their dumpling dough from scratch they buy because I've never had a dumpling that has that chew it's always this kind of texture so yeah that's it thank you Jen you so, worked hard over I, there and you deserve uh, to eat all of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah this, this is probably what I'm gonna eat tonight but no, I'm gonna share it with my husband and my daughter so my lovelies Thank you for being here tonight. I know that you, your time is very important and you made time to be here with me tonight making these dumplings. And I hope that you, um, you know, make it and have your, the recipe. I know you, you probably received the recipe because Ro, um, Ro Luca sent it out. I did. And I hope that you, you share it with family and friends. And I, I, I really thank you for taking the time to be here with me today. And Raluca, I thank you for inviting me to present here at your library. I, it's a wonderful library. Thank you, Jen, and for, for um, you know, coming and doing this program. Everybody seems to be, uh, you know, happy they joined because they say you made it look so easy and beautiful. Thank you. Uh, can we try them? And dumpling soup sounds like a wonderful idea. Um, well, I for one will try this. I have to, but I have to admit, I'm going to 
by the the rappers <laughs> I, I don't know if, if make it, it you know right i know the pleading you know the all you have if you can just I know. just make feel it <laughs> just feel it and then you'll um and like i said add add more veggies to the filling you know like shredded cabbage and carrots would be nice too um yeah and well hopefully next time we'll see each other again and i can show you like sushi we make sushi i teach su sushi making like it's it's chef approved sushi <laughs> so sushi making is all it's my, one of my popular classes so hopefully next time we'll see each other again yes and join for another dish <laughs> yep. definitely so thank you jen and thank you everybody for joining us uh after sure. this webinar will be over uh there will uh, you will receive a survey so please type in um what other programs you would like to us to provide you like um food related programs and i'll see what i can do okay have a good night everybody and thank you again for being with us Bye-bye. Bye, Raluca. Bye. -bye. Bye.